Amanda, how are you doing? I'm good, thanks, Jason. How are you? Uh, let's jump straight into this. So um, why don't you just kind of share how this all began for you and just kind of like your whole process um, going through this and kind of finding finding me and, and all that. Okay. Um, well, I first developed OP when I was pregnant with my second child. Um, it was probably halfway through the pregnancy, I think. Um, it was just awful at this point of barely being able to walk at times. Um, I had to have um, acupuncture just to help with the pain. Um, I gained weight because I wasn't exercising. Um, but I just had to put up with it because that's the kind of thing that happens when you're pregnant. Um, um, so after the baby was born, um, I had a period of rest about three months before I got back into running. Um, when I did get back into running, I was quite careful just to take it fairly easy. Um, but as soon as as soon as I got back into it, um, <laughs> what is now? <laughs> That's only fine. Bring them on the couch. No. <laughs> <laughs> keep going, keep going. Okay. Um, I, when I got back into running, I I did it, like, just did, did small runs. Um, and as soon as, like, after the runs, not so much during, but after the runs, I'd just be in lots of pain again. I couldn't. Um, push a bassinet, I couldn't push a pram, I couldn't push a tr shopping trolley, I couldn't have a baby on bouncing on my lap because of how much it hurt. Um, yeah, it was quite a tough time, um, especially given I was so keen to get back into my running after the baby was born, it was very disappointing. Um, but I just kind of let it go and would go back to it after a couple of weeks and try again. Um, but each time I'd go for the run, and it'd be kind of okay during the run, but afterwards it would just be awful. Like I'd just struggle with walking afterwards, struggle with most activities afterwards. Um, so I kind of realised that it was probably not the best idea to keep running, but because I'm a stubborn person and I love my running, I just kept pushing and pushing and pushing and hoping and trying different things. and. Eventually, I, I did a 10k run, sorry, um, fun run, and at the end, it was just so bad that I couldn't even get up out of the chair. And if I did, I basically lost control of my legs, and that really shocked me into realising how bad it was. Um, so I went to my GP and explained it, and I had a pretty good idea of what it was anyway. Um, um, so she sent me off for an x-ray, um, the x-ray showed that there was um, problems and I think it's a so much while going out. Um, then, she, then she sent me off to a sports physician and the sports physician sent me off for a x-rays and an MRI and the MRI showed obvious um, signs of OP and um, sclerosis and inflammation and um, all that sort of damage. So he told me that I needed to, to have six, sorry, nine months of running. It was going to be 12, but um, it ended up being nine. Um, we talked about having injections in the pubic synthesis to uh, stimulate some um, growth as uh, strength, but um, we didn't end up needing to do that, unfortunately. <coughs> so I, had, I took the nine months off um, and then I had to do a return to running program and that was just not working and uh, I was still getting pain and I, was, I went and saw her like, on top of the, um, his advice, I saw a physio, I saw a um, um, chiropractor, um, osteopath, all those sort of things, tried additional physiotherapists, but people in Hobart just had no idea what they were talking about. The sports physician didn't really know what he was talking about, it was just all about rest and 
that kind of stuff. So I was getting pretty desperate, thinking that I have to just never get back to one ever again, and that I just have to accept my life as, as it was and just carry on. Um, and I just remember being displaced one, one evening on the couch and Googling like there was no tomorrow, and, um, which I did fairly frequently anyway, um, around OP and pubic synthesis and all the search terms that I could possibly lay my hands on. Um, and I must have just clicked over to the, the video section of the Google and it linked through to the um, uh, YouTube section, um, and I discovered your some of your clips. And I still remember sitting there going, oh my god, <laughs> this all makes sense. <laughs> and saying to my husband at the time, oh my god. <laughs> um, so I, I then feverishly stayed up late watching every video until <clears throat> I'd exhausted them all and um, knew pretty much that I was onto something because it all made sense and it sounded like it was. Um, yeah, it just made sense to me um, that that's what the problem was and that's how we should go about fixing it. So um, I got onto um, your site and got in contact and I, I think I faffed around a little bit um, just trying to figure out how I was going to fit all of this um, into my life with the, the clips having to... <laughs> Sorry, I'm just getting a message. <laughs> yes. <coughs> um, where was I? So, well, you and I started the process, and I was really, um, I, I've actually found the, the Skype sessions and all of that. Um, really, really good. It was actually even more beneficial than going off and seeing a, a physio every week and getting some exercises and coming home and not doing them and, um, <laughs> and not knowing how to do them properly and having the clips that are, were available um, to watch and get the technique right and sending off the um, my exercises to you and getting the um, feedback and the, the drawings on the on the videos and um, just getting everything corrected and right, really beneficial. Um, so yeah, I definitely recommend that model of um, care, I guess, to people, um, even more so than a face-to-face -face, um, method. So I mean, uh, I got all of the equipment together and I, I did all the exercises and I, um, I started to get benefits um, very quickly. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so one thing like I've, I've been trying to kind of like highlight more um, when I've been doing these is, so you know you mentioned you went to like the osteo, the chiro, kind of like that. Um, and you know, you're Googling everything, you're trying to find an answer like, Take people through, like, I, I think this is really important and I, it's hard to kind of like, ex, like create an example of, but I think like more than anything, I, I like to say this, like people who are going to get better, get better, if that makes sense. So like you found me because you just kept searching until you found someone. And if you didn't find me, I feel like you would have kept searching until you found someone else. Like you would have just kept searching until you found a solution. It was kind of like... You know, so part of you, I'm sure, was thinking maybe I've got to accept this, but I don't think it was because there's part of you that was still Googling and YouTubing and, like, trying I to, like... I determined. Um, yeah. Personality. I just, yeah, I probably wouldn't have given up. But... Yeah, so, like, I feel like that that process is really important because I think when people go through, like, the rehab and to get over such a complex condition and, like, some people don't get OP as badly as you had it, you know, that it's not affecting their walking, it's only when they play sport and stuff like that. Um, but it is like a complex, really difficult condition to get over. But I feel like that sense of resilience, like, well, no, I'm not going to stop till I figure it out. Like, I'm not going to stop doing this exercise till I get it right. Like, to me, that's more important than, like, even to some degree, it's more important than the right treatment. Because, like, even if you had the wrong treatment, like, you would just see the next person. And it was the next person, like, like, talk people through, like, 
like what it is for you that just made you keep going again and again and again like and and how you kept yourself continuing googling and searching when you couldn't find any answers kind of thing um hmm. I I think, I, like I said, I've got a pretty determined personality. Um, and I think that most issues have solutions. Um, maybe I felt that because I was in Tassie, um, the knowledge down here wasn't as... Um, I just knew that I needed to resolve my problem and if I didn't, I'd probably come and say. I knew that I'd been able to run before with no problems before having children and somehow maybe I hoped that through getting answers and over time and my hormones settling down and um, getting more strength and like I continued doing once after those nine months had finished, I continued, I started back up um, doing my, my gym classes and um, that complemented all of the stuff that you were teaching me and um, I was able to improve my technique uh, when I was actually in those classes doing weightlifting and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, it's, I'm just, I just don't know for an answer. I and like it's it's funny just how many like how much like people who kind of like go through this condition and can really get on top of it. How many like that's what people have in common? Just this kind of like it's like this kind of thing like I deserve better. Like I deserve to be able to run. I deserve to be able to use my body pain free. Like and you know I deserve to live my life without having to like consider this condition constantly. And it's this kind of like resilience to be like. Well, you know what? No, I'm just gonna like keep doing and figuring this out, and then I will find a solution. And and it's kind of like, especially with a condition like this, where the answers aren't easy to come by, and and it can be so difficult, and it can be so dejecting in, in some ways to just continue to find the same information or to get like answers when you meet someone and know that they're not, you know, that you don't intuitively connect to them yet, and it can be really hard. But that that stick to itness to like just keep going, I think is kind of really important and, and really vital like to the whole rehab process. Um, talk talk a little bit about like, so you, you start the process, right? And you're a mother of two and you've got all this stuff going on in your life. Like just just talk about how, what gave you the, the focus to then like, you know, to keep pushing and going through the exercises as like, you know, you had so much going on and like, you know, how you were able to kind of like bring yourself through the program. Like, like how did you stay motivated? How did you stay focused? Um, well, I just knew that it would be worth it in the end. I just had to do it because otherwise I would never get where I needed to be. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I just was that set on getting myself back. But, I mean, I'm, I'm a practical person. I could understand the physical um, explanation, the way you explain everything. Um, I saw, I saw the testimonials on your website, um, got in touch with other people, um, there's the OP page on Facebook and uh, got in touch with some of your other clients. <coughs> I could see that it was um, a, a worth, it was worthwhile. I mean, I wouldn't, even if your price, if, if I knew that I could fix myself and your fees were double what they are, I still would have paid it. I didn't care what it was that I had to do to get better. Basically. Oh, don't, don't tell people that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and your dedication, like, you're just obviously passionate and um, just the involvement that you apply to your responses to the videos, you make sure that you um, get it all all sorted, sent back, it's all on time, there's no no problems. It was, yeah, it was great. <laughs> what do you think was like, what was the hardest point in, in your like, in your like recovery when you were doing the program? Like what was the point or the exercise or the thing where you were just like wanting to throw something through a wall kind of thing? 
Um, I remember getting into the exercises and doing them and getting a benefit and then um, think, getting a bit um, overexcited and going off and thinking that I could do a lot more than I should have been doing my gym classes on my own and then getting a bit deflated. But um, I did my self-care exercises and I continued on and knuckled down even more with my exercises and um, um, yeah, I just continued on. Awesome. Um, so, like you were telling me earlier, um, I really want you to tell people about that run and the blisters and the hill. <laughs> well, when I, before I got pregnant with my second child, I was actually training for the Point Technical in Hobart, Tasmania, which is the um, world's toughest half marathon. Um, and then I realised I was trying for baby and found out that I was pregnant um, three weeks out from the event. So I had to postpone that, um, and then I got pregnant and had a baby and got OP, and so I was never able to get back to that until um, three years later, um, just recently, um, thanks to Jason. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I did the, the pot pinnacle, and it was amazing, and um, my OP didn't flare up. Um, I trained for it uh, for... A number of a couple of months, well, it's a hundred days actually, but I had to pull out of my bum <laughs> with encouragement. Uh, and got up the mountain, and it was fantastic. It was an awesome achievement. Did it in two two and a half hours, and yeah, I've recently just this weekend gone done a second half marathon which was on the flat and got that done in an hour and a half. No, sorry. What was it? One hour fifty. One hour fifty, not hour and a half. I was going to say that's really fast. You've <laughs> yeah, got a three hour sorry. marathon pace. Um, an hour and fifty, which is um, ten minutes less than what I was hoping for. So. Oh wow, that's quick then. <laughs> yeah, I, I would have been happy with anything within the two hours. I mean, I'm a recreational runner, really. Nothing in comparison to some of your other clients, but um, <laughs> it's it's all relative. Yeah. Um, I was going to say. All right, um, last question. If if someone was kind of in your situation and they're they're kind of like you know they're 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 struggling, they're watching this, they're just like struggling the whole OP process and things like that. What do you think let you, like, what was the thing that allowed, like, you know, kept you focused and kept you to get better? What, like, you know, what let you get through the program successfully? Like, what was it that you found was the most useful thing that you would want to impart upon someone else? Just making it part of your routine, like the exercises every night, um, not thinking, oh, I'll just do it every second night or a couple of times a week. You have to make it part of your lifestyle change, otherwise you're not going to get the benefits as um, consistently. Um, so dedicating a, a time every night or every morning to, to go off and do your exercises. Um, and it's worth it. It sounds like a massive commitment, but it's worth it because the pain that you get and the effect that it has on your life and your lifestyle and your ability to exercise, it's just it's worth it. You, don't, you just have to do it, basically. <laughs> awesome. Uh, well, thank you so much for doing this, Amanda. And um, yeah, anyone who's watching this, um, I really hope you take a lot from it. Um, Amanda was being a little, uh, a little modest uh, in that when she ran up that that giant hill, and it is really a giant hill. Uh, she had some insane blisters, as she was telling me, which I just think makes it more like momentous when you run up and your like feet are killing you, and you just like keep pushing. So um, yeah. Awesome. And your toenails go black and fall off. Oh, yeah, you did, like, see? <laughs> but, yeah, I just think that makes it even more incredible. But, yeah, hopefully anyone who's watching this, um, hopefully you can take a lot away from it. And, yeah, thank you so much. No worries. My pleasure.